So the next thing I want to talk to you about is the factorial function and something called the choose function. And you're probably going to feel like this has got nothing to do with binomial expansion. You're going to have to trust me. I often say this to my students. You're going to have to trust me and you're going to see where this is coming in back to binomial expansion in just a few slides time. So we're going to talk about this factorial function first. This n with the exclamation mark is said as n factorial. And it is known as the number of ways of arranging n objects in a line. And the other definition of how you actually find the factorial is you start off with whatever the number is, you then decrease it by one and you multiply it, decrease it by one and multiply it, keep decreasing it by one until you finish at one. So just as a, a quick example, five factorial is five, decrease it by one and multiply it, decrease it by one and multiply it, decrease it by one and multiply it, decrease it by one and multiply it. So five factorial is those all multiplied together. That's going to be five times four times three times two times one, which is, whoa, uh, if I can type properly, 120. And it is the number of ways of arranging n objects in a line. So this means that there are 120 ways of arranging five objects in a line. So imagine having, I don't know, you and four friends, there's five of you and you're going to sit in a line. There are 120 different ways of you being sat in a line. There's quite a lot of them. So let's see why this works. Let's try doing it with a really simple example. It says, suppose that you had three letters, A, B and C, and you wanted to arrange them in a line to form a word, maybe not an English word, but just at least three letters in a particular order. You can't use them more than once. You just have those three letters. So it looks like we've got three objects and we're wanting to arrange them in a line. So we think it's going to be three factorial, which is three times two times one which is going to be six. So I think there's going to be six ways of doing this. So I'm going to start off by putting A down. I had a choice of three things to begin with. So my first choice, I have three options. And then I'm going to think about my second choice. So after I've picked A, I've only got two options now. I can either pick B or I can pick C. So my second choice, I've only got two options. And then for my third choice, I've only got one option left. I have to put the letter C. So that's pretty much going to summarise why I'm going to have six options. But let's just keep going. So I could have picked A and then instead of picking uh, B, I could have picked C. So I could have A, C, B. But instead of picking A to begin with, I could have picked B and then A and then C. I could have done B, but then C, then A. Or to begin with, I could have picked C and then done A, B. Or I could have done C, then B, A. So that's why there are six ways of doing this, because to begin with, I had three choices. After that, I only have two choices. After that, I only have one choice of what to put in. And you can see this. This is where I have got, after I've picked the first one, I have two choices. But to begin with, I had these three choices. So you can see it kind of like there's two choices within the three choices, which creates this pattern of there being six different things. Um, and it's the same thing with these 500 and uh, if we, the 120 way of arrive, uh, arranging five things. If I said A, B, C, D and E, well, I've got five different um, choices of the beginning part. And then I've got four choices for what I put in the second part, et cetera, et cetera. You would find that this list would have 120 different arrangements. Anyway, you'll see how this comes into binomial expansion very soon. We're now going to talk about the next function, which is called the choose function. And the choose function uses factorials, which is why I talk about the factorial function first. I just want to quickly say about how this thing here is written. There is a small n, a big letter c, and then a small r. And it goes from the top left down to the bottom right corner that we've got like this. There is another way of writing this, which looks a bit like a column vector, and it has an n at the top and then an r at the bottom. And this is the definition for this. And I believe this is actually in the, the formula book. Um, and this is n factorial over r factorial, n minus r factorial. You say this whole expression as n choose r. And what this function means is that it is the number of ways of choosing r things from n 
such that the order in our selection does not matter. And these are also called the binomial coefficients. So you're starting to see this is going to be coming back into binomial expansion. So um, let's just think of this with an example. This is, for example, if you choose, if you are a football team captain and you need to choose four people from amongst 10 in your class. So this is exactly the situation here. We are choosing four people from 10. Then there are 10 choose four or this thing here, which I'm going to explore, there are 210 possible selections of four people from a group of 10. I'm not going to explain why this formula works here, but you can find out why this formula works. It's pretty easy to understand, but I didn't want to spend too much time on this video looking at this. Generally, I prefer this 10, oh, 10 choose 4 notation than the 10 choose 4 notation like this, but this is how it will appear on your calculator. And I'm going to show you how you use this in your calculator in just a second. You can find this and it will show you what it does. So we have got, um, we're trying to work out what 10 choose 4 is. I'm going to use this formula that we've got at the top. 10 choose 4. Well, this is the n part and this is the r part. So the top part will be the 10 factorial. Then you're going to have the 4 factorial on the bottom. And then this section we've got here, n minus r, it's just the difference. You're just going to do this one, take away this. 10 take away 4 is 6 factorial. And so you'll notice these two add up to the numerator that we've got here. Now, we're not going to actually work out 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 and 4 times 3 times 2 and 6 times 5 times, because it's going to take a long time. So we're going to explore some of the calculator buttons that we've got here, OK? First of all, I'm going to do it with the factorial method. So I'm going to do 10. My factorial button is where this one is up here that I've just been pressing to the minus 1, but I'm just going to press Shift first in that. So I'm going to do 10, Shift, and the exclamation mark. And it is huge. So I've got 3, 6, 2, double, 8, 0, 0. And then I'm going to do my 4 factorial, which is 24. And I'm going to do my 6 factorial, which is 720. But I'm just going to type that all in as one thing, OK, just to save a bit of time. So I'm going to do 10 factorial over 4 factorial multiplied by 6 factorial. And I get the answer 210, as I'd already said up here. But there's another way you can type this onto your calculator. You can find out 10 choose R on your calculator directly. So I'm going to press the shift on the divide button. You can see it says N, C, R, N, choose R. So I'm going to do 10 choose uh, R, which is 4. So 10 choose 4 is 210. Should have been a 4 there. So you can go straight to that in the calculator as well. So let's explore using this choose function. You can calculate the following, but you may, um, you may use the factorial button, but not the n choose r button, because I want us to practice using this formula first of all. So you can either have a go at these yourself, um, or I'm going to work through these in just a second. You can pause it now if you'd like to have a go. OK, so first of all, 5 factorial. I mean, that's just as simple as typing it into your calculator. 5 factorial is 120. Now, here we've got five choose three. So this is saying I've got five things and I want to know how many different ways are there of selecting three out of those five things. So I would do five factorial over three factorial. That's my n factorial over r factorial. The next part is n minus r factorial. So it'd be two factorial. So I'm going to just type this directly into my calculator. I'm going to do five factorial over three factorial times two factorial. And I get the answer 10. So there are 10 ways of selecting three things out of a group of five. OK, the other way I could have done that, even though I said not to use this button, I could do five, choose three and we get the answer 10. Now, zero factorial, have a think, predict. What do you think zero factorial might be? Most people usually think it's going to be zero. This is quite a strange one here. And I'm going to see if we can explain why in a moment. Zero factorial is actually equal to one. OK, so D, it says 20 choose 1. Let's not use the formula here. Let's think to ourselves. I've got 20 things and I'm going to select one thing out of those 20. How many possible options could I have? Well, I think there are going to be 20 options. I could just pick all of the, the different things. I could pick each of them. So it should be 20. But let's see if it's going to be 20. Let's actually calculate this by using the formula. I'm going to do 20 factorial over 1 factorial 
19 factorial. I'm hoping I'm going to get the answer 20 here because I've got 20 things and I'm just choosing one of them. So that's 20 factorial over 1 factorial, which is just obviously going to be 1, times by 19 factorial. And thank goodness I do get the answer 20 for this question. Now let's see if we can predict this one. I've got 20 things and I'm not going to pick any of them. How many ways could I do that? Well, I think there's only going to be one way of doing that, which is just not picking any of them. So let's see if we can explain why 0 factorial has to be 1. So 20 factorial over 0 factorial, and we do 20 minus 0, which is 20 factorial. Well, clearly here, the only thing that's going to make this be equal to 1 is if 0 factorial is equal to 1, because these are going to cancel, and we're going to have then 1 over 0 factorial looks like 0 factorial is going to have to be equal to 1 in order to make that work, OK? Now we're going to do 20 choose 2. I'm expecting this to be a bit bigger because we are picking two things out of a group of 20. So I'm going to do 20 factorial over 2 factorial. And then that next bit is n minus r, so you're going to do this one minus this one, which is 18 factorial. I'm going to type that all in. So that is 20 factorial over... 2 factorial, well that's just 2 times 1, so I'm just going to leave it as a 2, and 18 factorial is 190. So there are many, many more ways of doing this. I'm also just going to show you I could do 20 choose 2 using my calculator. 20 choose 2 is 190 as well. And then we're going to do this last one, which is 20 and 18. So I'm going to do 20 over 18 factorial, 2 factorial. Well, I'm not going to type that one in my calculator because what I'm hoping you can see is this and this is exactly the same. These just bits in the denominator are switched. That's not going to affect any of their calculations. So to pick two things out of 20, there are 190 options. And to pick 18 things out of 20, there are 190 options. I guess that makes sense because when you pick 18 things, you're leaving two of them behind. So there should be the same number of ways of picking two things and leaving 18 of them behind. So why do we care about all of this? Well, the power of the binomial expansion, if it's large, like perhaps something x plus 3 to the power of 20, it is no longer practical to go this far down Pascal's triangle. I don't want to go down to the 20th row. It's going to take me too long. So we can instead use the choose function to get the numbers from anywhere within the triangle. And we're going to practice doing this after the next exercise. Exercise 8b is exploring the choose function that we've got here. So you can try some of these out, but let's just see that this actually works. Let's have a look at this one that we've got here, which is going to be the um, third one across on the fourth row. And it's this 4 choose 2. Let's just check that 4 choose 2, 4 choose 2, it does give me 6. And let's try this first one that we've got here. Let's try, um, and let's do this 3. So that is my 3 choose 2. Let's check that. 3, choose 2. Yeah, it does give me 3. So all of the coefficients for Pascal's triangle can be found using these binomial coefficients, which are also the choose function. So I'd like you to have a go now at exercise 8b.